Joining us now is Gavin Wax, president of the New York Young Republican Club, to break all this down for us. Gavin, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me back. It's great to be here. Does Trump change his strategy in the Northeast against Vice President Harris at this point? I think the Trump campaign has been uh, run quite well this cycle. I think they've been really uh, tactful and strategic in their uh, rhetoric and their comms and their messaging and how they've pushed back against Biden. And now I think we're going to see the same as they push back against Kamala, Kamala, whatever her name is, Harris. Uh, I think the poll that you just cited is actually uh, an interesting one because if you look into the cross tabs, she's actually uh, in some pretty uh, dangerous territory with several subsets uh, of groups, particularly particularly in terms of her uh, percentage of the black vote, her percentage of the women vote, and of course, the typical Republican cohorts of married uh, men and women and single men. Uh, so even though that poll shows a top level figure of only a point, a point differential, uh, in reality, I think there's a lot of uh, issues uh, for the Harris campaign bubbling under the surface. And look, I think she's experienced right now a post announcement bump, uh, obviously coming off of the news of Biden uh, choosing not to to run again, uh, and obviously a crazy uh, week and a half, two weeks uh, in the news cycle, uh, she's going to get a little bit of a bump. But I think as this campaign goes on over the next few weeks, we're going to see that subside and we're going to see a return uh, to the polling numbers that President Trump uh, was uh, achieving with vis-a-vis uh, -vis Biden right before this announcement. Uh, Gavin, I, I agree with you. I think that the the race as it stands, uh, we have got several factors that have significantly boosted up both sides. But ultimately, I think the Democrats were struggling with Biden against Trump in the sense that they, they simply were trying to get people to hate Trump, and it was hard to hate Trump when you hated Biden more. But now... It looks like Kamala's messaging is going to be really geared towards riling up that never-Trumper, anti-Trump um, group. But my question to you, in a, coming out of a blue state, is how fervent is that anti-Trump vote still? Well, listen, I think it's uh, going to be a uh, failed strategy if they decide to approach this campaign as simply being anti-Trump once more. President Trump is not the incumbent. President Trump is not currently in office. Uh, and they're already maxing out uh, their percentages with that never Trump, you know, fervently anti-MAGA, anti-Trump base. I mean, they really need to appeal to independent voters. They really need to appeal to voters in swing states. They really need to appeal uh, to a lot of these crossover voters who have jumped between, you know, Trump, Biden, Obama, whoever else over the past few cycles. So, and Clinton, uh, instead, they're really just trying to shore up their base, shore up their supposedly most loyal uh, supporters. I think that just shows a certain degree of weakness. And look, I think what what, can't, what comes down to it uh, is that they realize that there was no shot with Biden, that he was uh, going to lose no matter what. And I think they're taking a chance on Harris. I don't think they really see her deep down as a, a massive improvement over Biden. They were kind of stuck with her. This was sort of pushed off to the last possible minute. Uh, she is a historically weak candidate. This is a candidate who, as a Democrat, barely won statewide uh, in California in 2010 uh, during the height of the Obama years. Uh, this is a candidate who uh, barely got 1% in the primary in 2020. She's incredibly unpopular, incredibly awkward, incredibly uncharismatic. Uh, she's had tons of money and support behind her. She's been very much propped up by the Democrat establishment, but she has uh, massive issues uh, as, it as it comes to being a candidate. And I think she's going to combine all the worst parts of both Hillary and Biden into one. Uh, so I think, you know, many people have said publicly, we couldn't have picked a better candidate to run against. We still need to be diligent. We can't uh, rest on our laurels. Uh, but I think she's going to have a lot of serious issues. And if her strategy is simply to appeal to hating Trump rather than running on any, uh, you know, successes, policy successes or experience she may or may not have, I think that's a massive uh, failing. She needs to be providing an alternative vision, not just uh, one of hating Trump endlessly. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.